Well, we're now looking at precious metals, and depending on how you see the market reaction to the current economic climate, it may steer you towards this area uh, for investment, which is so often referred to as a safe haven away from volatility uh, and inflation. Joining us now is Eric Strand. He's a portfolio manager at the AUAG Funds in Stockholm. Eric, thanks indeed for your time. Uh, first of all, how should we view gold and silver at the moment in the current economic part of the economic cycle? Well, first of all, nice to be here, Jeremy. Uh, I mean, gold has uh, and silver has different properties. If it's about uh, defending a portfolio and it's a very volatile market, uh, but I mean, that's something that goes up for short term and then comes back. But what is important is the monetary inflation that we have going since the last years, the money printing. And that is what's really driving the gold price. And of course, when there is uh, something happening in the system, if it has been the war or now uh, other things happening, the bank crisis uh, goes, goes up from that as well. But uh, in the end, it's all about the money printing in the system. Well, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, money printing, of course, in the system, and we have seen record highs uh, for, for gold. Uh, but those that think there's better places to put the money always go back to this same point that gold doesn't pay a dividend. It doesn't give you any return. You just hold it and then sell it when you want to sell it. How do you get around that um, when you're talking to investors about investing in the precious metals space? What do you say to them about how to get returns out of investing in precious metals? Well, I think that is also the definition of gold. It should have no dividends because you don't have any counterparty risks. I mean, when you have counterparty risks, that's why you get dividends or, or returns from, from, from the bank or whatever. Uh, you don't have the counterparty risks, so you don't have the, that uh, interest on gold. Uh, so it fills its function. But of course, I mean, we are... Uh, printing so much money that gold goes up. Gold is actually the constant. Uh, it's the fiat currencies. If it's the euro, pound or dollar, that actually goes down compared to gold. So uh, you will get the returns there, but you are right. You can also go to the miners because the miners are equity and they actually have really high uh, dividends today. Around Many have 4% dividend, 5% dividend uh, because they have really good uh, balance sheets, uh, very good cash flow. So uh, the miners is actually a dividend played as well. And of course, we, we hear that gold perhaps maybe doesn't have as many uses as silver. Is silver a better play or is gold a better play at the moment? Or do they run side by side in times of economic stress? Do they both go up together or do they go up in, in sort of different dynamics? Well, I, I do really, really like gold, but uh, I'm actually in love with silver. Silver is uh, an amazing metal uh, because it has both parts. Gold is used like 10% of all mine gold is used for high tech and we need that high tech for everything. So we cannot be without that gold. But silver is uh, like 50% investment, 50% industrial use and it's used in so many places. It's like the second most used commodity after oil in different applications, and it's everywhere. And what is interesting is that you only need very little silver in everything, if it's the car, mobile phone, or sun cells, but you need it because it's the best metal to lead electricity and heat in uh, this uh, transformation to electrification in the world. And uh, when you don't need so much, but you need it, the price becomes inelastic. That means uh, even if the price of silver doubles or triples, you use so little in a car, so the price of the car doesn't change. Uh, so the producers of the cars, they need the silver, they pay anything, because without it, they can't do the car. Uh, and that makes a really interesting uh, development for the price of silver, this in inelasticity, mm. and that we don't have any reserves, it gets really, really tight. Uh, so we do think that the big car producers Soon they will start to buy more silver just to have in case so they don't run out of it because if you don't have it, you cannot produce many things. Yeah. How, how much of um, the, in the price is the scarcity of the metal coming out of the ground? I mean, we, we never know where the next big mine's going to come from and how lucrative it's going to be. So it's always very difficult to tell just what's around the corner. But uh, what are we looking at in terms of demand and supply here? We've been talking about the the availability of this investment to give us some stability, some grounding, some uh, of the um, 
the market away from volatility. But is there a, a play on here because there is insufficient amount of metal coming out of the ground? Yeah, well, of course, in in gold, the old gold that is, has been mined is there because nobody throws gold away because it's so valuable. So there you have a lot of gold. Uh, but probably or the thing is, who wants to sell it at what price? Uh, in silver, there is very close to physical shortage. And if you have a physical shortage in the uh, commodity space, the prices, they go, I mean, they go really fast. And we think we are there in silver. In gold, uh, it will not be that fast, but uh, still, it has. there has been so much money printing and gold has had some uh, headwinds because of uh, the strong dollar, the Fed uh, hiking rates really fast. Uh, still, gold has been strong. And now, we're, after the banking crisis, we see uh, the Fed has to reverse their QT. They are now back almost where they started the QT. So... Uh, and and the market doesn't expect them much more of rate hikes in the U.S. Uh, so that gets really really interesting for gold for gold to have a lot of uh, tailwinds to have a lot of speed forward. So it, now it looks really really good. So now it's a good time. Yeah. How do you how do you recommend an investor goes about getting exposure? I mean, you've got your ETF. So let's talk a little bit about how they how they give exposure to the market. Your 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 gold fund seems to be mostly, if not all, in equities. But there's also other options, aren't there, to invest in this space, like bullion, like like sovereigns or, or, or currency. Um, what, what do you recommend and how does one go about constructing a good, solid portfolio of precious metals investments? Well, we are a bit uh, hardcore physical, so I always think you should have some, some uh, gold and silver at home or maybe if not at home, very close to your home or somewhere where you only you can get to it. So, but that doesn't have to be so much, but you should have the, the coins, especially silver coins, if there is a the really, really bad situation in the world, but hopefully you won't need it. It's like the insurance of your house. But if you want to invest larger amounts of money on your platform, I think uh, you can have the bullion bar or a straight gold commodity. Uh, we have that with the Han ETF. There is the RMAU, the Royal Mint, one-to-one uh, -one gold. And then it's, of course, our ETF, uh, where we have the miners instead. So if you play uh, precious metals to for safety, I would recommend the ETF or ETC, it's called, uh, with just gold in it. But if you start to like, okay, this is a place where we can get some returns. It has very low correlation with the normal equity market. Uh, then the miners, of course, are much more interesting. So it, it depends a little bit how where you want to go with the investment. Yeah, let's let's look at um, a couple of charts just to remind ourselves as to the compare and contrast between what's happened with gold and what's happened with silver. I want to break up a gold chart first of all. You'll be familiar with this. We're not too far away at the moment in terms of dollar value at two thousand dollars. And you can see if you, if you look at this, I mean, it goes back to the middle of the chart here, back to August twenty eleven when we had that uh, record high there, and of course that was surpassed. Uh, by the record high going back to August 2020. Uh, since then, it, it's not been too far away from the top. And indeed, this recent rally has taken us up, as I said, to that 2000 level. But if you look at silver, it's a very different sort of chart where you've got this big pullback from the highs that we had uh, back in April 2011, all the way up at $49.82 per troy ounce. Here we are now at 2404. And I know that you, as a specialist in the gold and silver area, you look at this thing about the gold to silver ratio, what is the ratio tell us? It's currently 82. That means if you divide the amount of the cost of an ounce of gold by the ounce of silver, you get it to 82. What's, what's that telling us at the moment? Uh, the short answer is that silver is cheap. So, uh, and that would be a better investment if you believe that we will see a secular bull market for precious metals. Uh, in uh, historical bull markets for precious metals, the ratio would go down to 30 to 1 approximately uh, and then it's good to know the natural occurrence in earth is 16 to 1 uh, and that was the price that uh, Sir Isaac Newton set as well 16 to 1 uh, which means uh, silver has a lot of room to go up I think this one if we have a really strong bull market it could go down to 10 to 1 even uh, but we will start to think about 30 to 1 but 10 to 1 is possible because this uh, physical shortage of silver 
as silver has this, uh, as I said, uh, properties for electricity and heat uh, that no other metal has in the world. So uh, I think uh, we will see a, a new record on that purpose. But now, so it's 82 to 1, then uh, silver is cheap. And uh, when it comes down to 30 to 1 or 20 to 1, then maybe you should sell the silver and buy the gold. Uh, but at this moment, silver and uh, miners is the most interesting if you look at the return. Uh... Okay, well, let's, 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 let's take what you've just said and assume that we're going to get this bull market. I want to bring back the gold chart because it's nice round numbers. We're at 2,000. Um, you're talking yep. about 30 to 1, possibly 10 to 1. And you say silver is relatively cheap compared to gold at the moment. So you're talking about a big incremental increase proportionately than gold. Here we are, gold at 2000. How far up in a bull market are you expecting both these precious metals to go? What To keep that ratio that you're now looking at, what are your levels of expectation in times of stress or strain in the market? We are expecting a new all-time high in uh, gold in US dollars. We see it already in a lot of different currencies, but not in the US dollar as it has been rather strong, not the last months, but before that. Uh, and we will pass. We are now really, really close to the 2000 again, has been the last period of the weeks. Uh, and when we go through that, and it, when we go through 2100, it will just go up a lot. So up until 2100, there will be some uh, struggle there. But uh, when we pass 2,100, we will continue. And uh, for the year, we would uh, expect a 20% return in gold in US dollars. But we also think that the US dollar will lose value towards the euro or pound, maybe let's say 10%. And that would mean a European investor would only get 10% of net return, even if the gold price in dollars up 20%. And this is where it makes interesting with the miners, because the miners are normally a leverage play on gold. Let's say it goes up twice or go down twice. That's just an example. If gold goes up 20%, the miners would go up 40%. Uh, and what happens is this leverage happens before the FX change. So this minus 10% you lose on the FX, the currencies, will give you a net of 30% compared to the 10%. So it would be a three-time leverage for a European investor. In the US, it would just be the two-time leverage. But for a European investor, this year, may, where we may see a weaker dollar, and why do we see a weaker dollar? Because uh, the Fed raised, raised, uh, raised their rates before everybody else. That made the US dollar so strong. Now they are there. They can't raise it if they maybe a little bit, but it's like 25 basis points. And we think the ESCB... Uh, we'll have to, to raise rates a little bit more. That means uh, the euro will get stronger and the pound may get stronger. And that's why you may lose on the on the dollar this year. And that makes the mining or minor investment really, really interesting this year. And, and of course, this all goes hand in hand with this idea that when you get that leveraged incre incremental increase in the price of gold, you're getting more profits. That's assuming, of course, that costs don't go up per ounce to get the, the, the gold out of the ground. But nonetheless, I, I get your point, and it, it is a point that's well made. If we do see that rise in, in gold, um, and it passes at 2100, and then easily drifts on to, what, 3000? I mean, have you, got a, have you got a number in mind? It's difficult to, to talk about yeah. numbers just out of the air, but yeah. do you have a sort of a figure that you are working to? Uh, well, I think, I mean, we are long only, so we won't leave the space, even if it goes too far right. and in, in a secular bull market, it, one day it will go up too much or more than it should. Uh, but we actually view a gold below 3000 as cheap because, and, and the reason to that is that there's so much money printed, so much debt created. And uh, every time we see the central bank or the Fed try to make a QT, they've tried that four times and every time they resort to the same thing and that is to print more money create more debt i mean we had a debt crisis 2008 and now we have more than twice the amount of debt so we never solved the problem and i think for uh, politicians and so on the easy way out is always to create more debt and more money and that will continue so we see uh, the prices go up a lot in the future and the, okay, the real so, bull market so the real secular bull market will start now 
Right. Okay. So go, going back to this gold to silver ratio, if you if you say gold under three thousand is cheap, let's just let's just say there's a there's a target of three thousand. That takes silver up from look at this chart here, twenty four oh five, up to what a hundred dollars an ounce. Correct. Yeah. With thirty to so one, we would be at a, a triple digit silver at one hundred, and uh, so that would mean we would have a three hundred percent return in silver where there's a 50% return in gold. Uh, and I think that that's proportion is interesting. Then if gold only goes up 25%, still silver may, may make uh, three times that percentage. So silver is really, really interesting. But of course, it's a volatile commodity. It's a smaller market. So you really have to buckle up and, and not get have, you have to have strong nerves uh, because it goes up and down really fast. And you cannot really wait for it because uh, when it goes up, it goes up really, really fast. Okay, let's, we, we've spoken about your gold portfolio. What about the silver? Are you heavily into stocks in the silver sector as well? Or are you spread across other um, sort of assets within the silver space? Uh, no, we have uh, our daily usage fund uh, is uh, focusing on silver miners. And uh, you really try to get the primary silver miners uh, because sometimes silver is a byproduct and you don't really want that miner, so you really try to find uh, as much silver as possible. Of course, no miner is just mining one commodity. I mean, you, if you find gold, you, you take the, the gold up as well, and, and every deposit has both gold and silver, so there is no pure. You just have to have the focus on miners that have more silver or more gold, actually. Okay, look, it's a fascinating chat. Thanks indeed for your time, Eric. It's been a pleasure uh, catching up with you and finding out more about your uh, your portfolio investments. Thanks for joining us. That's Eric Strand. He's Portfolio Manager at AUAG Funds.